sleeping. Well, I thought today I would show you guys a couple of scores I've got. I got yet another HP uh, 5335A. Uh, however, this one uh, came with the high stability option and it came with the uh, with the C channel. Everything works. Uh, I've got no complaints. All the functions work. I've bench tested it. I uh, let it sit for uh, a couple of days so I could get the oven nice and warm. And, uh, I mean, this thing's in not too bad a shape. Its last calibration, according to this sticker, was in 2009. And it was due in 2010. Uh, used to belong to uh, GTE Telephone Operations. So, um, they uh, took pretty good care of it. I mean, it's... Overall, it's in really nice condition, except for the you know the usual stuff you get on the top of these things. They get stuff put on them. They scrape the uh, the finish, but yeah, nice. Uh, what we're gonna do though is that we're gonna adjust the time base because it is running a little fast. Uh, according to the display, it's running about uh, 70 millihertz uh, uh, low on the display. So we're going to open this thing up and uh, we're going to adjust it until that trace stops, uh, stops moving. Alright, a quick tour on the inside. There's the channel C board, that's this, this slot that it plugs in, and there's the one for the voltmeter, so... Maybe I'll try to find another parts unit and uh, get the voltmeter section, but... I think that section may be a little bit different than the one that's in my other one. But uh, yeah, there's the, uh, the 10, 8, 11. So we'll get the uh, screwdriver out and we will try to tweak that in so we can get that trace that's moving to the left to stop. So here we go. All right. We're all ready to go here, so let's get that screwdriver into get in there. There we go. Now let's see if we can get that stopped. Ever so slightly here. Come on. Whoa, that broke loose. Wow. Yeah, these things, uh, they're not adjusted for a long time. Yeah, that's, uh, well, it looks like that. Uh, that adjustment's probably a little bad, I think. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something here. Alrighty. Yeah, I got it, uh... Got it a little closer there, but, uh, it's still... Drifting a little to the or a little to the right, so I will tweak her in a little bit, and uh, I'll probably uh, call it good because it's pretty darn close. But we need to tweak it in just a little bit more. Well, that's about as still as I can get it. I uh, wish these things uh, had the uh, the EFC control so you can. Uh, Use that course control to get it really close and then uh, tune it in with the EFC, but no such luck. But yeah, I'm uh, going to let that sit for a little bit and I think I'm going to call it good. Well, I think I'm going to call that good. That's about as steady as I can get it, so I uh, think I'll close her up and call it good. But before I do that, let's uh, I'll give you a shot of the back here. It's a lot of nice controls on the back. We've got, we've got some switches to change the slope. We got the, all the uh, HPIB uh, connectivity stuff. 
GPIB or HPIB uh, address switches. And of course, once again, everything inside. So yeah, let's put her back together and uh, see what happens. Alrighty, jumping back and forth between all nines and ten max. So I think I'm gonna call that a good one. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with this. It, uh, it was another one of those bargains. One of those. Uh, you know, it's only it was only powered on, and they never tested it. So. But yeah, it came with all the feet, and uh, <laughs> I like have I like my instruments to have all the feet. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, integrate that into the system, and I guess I'll uh, go on to the next instrument. So uh, <clears throat> we got uh, the big enchilada down here. It's an HP 5370B, uh, and so it's much deeper than this counter, so it's gonna. <clears throat> take up a little more desk space, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, oven just needed to be adjusted, so we get that on the desk and we'll check that one out too. All right, and here we are. This is the big enchilada, the HP 5370B uh, universal time interval counter. I've been looking for one of these for years. This one here is a uh, was made made in the eighty or eighty six or so. <clears throat> this thing's in beautiful condition. I mean, it has it is almost spotless. There's very minor bumps and scrapes on this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, there you know there were a couple of stickers on it that the previous owner removed, but as far as I can tell, this thing's. Probably uh, only been calibrated once. It is a little off. It's running a <clears throat> oscillator is running a little slow. It's because it's showing about 152 millihertz high or so. But yeah, nice. I uh, this is another one that I bench tested, and uh, according to uh, all my tests, it's the only thing wrong with it is the uh, the oscillator is a little off. So and we'll open this one up too. Take a look inside and. Uh, Get that oscillator adjusted. See if we can get to as many zeros as possible. But yeah, that's all the way down to uh, 100. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, milli micro. So we're down to 100 uh, microsecond in there, our microhertz resolution. So yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so anyway, let's open her up and see what she looks like on the inside. Holy crap! Look at all that HP goodness. Look at that massive power supply. There's the oven. <clears throat> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I see uh, no dust. That This thing is em amazingly clean. <clears throat> yeah, this is another score bargain that uh, I got that was... Uh, you know, all they did was power it up. They didn't do any testing at all. Holy cow. All right, well, let's, uh, let's look this thing up and uh, see uh, how far she is off. Yeah, she's uh, running just a little slow. So we'll uh, whip out the adjustment tool and uh, see if we can fix this. All right, there we are. Tool in there and see if we can... Uh, Let's speed that up a little bit. Oh yeah, this oscillator adjusts a lot nicer. Almost there. A little bit the wrong way. Yeah. Oh man, just the gnats behind. Anyway, let me uh, work on this a little bit. All right, I think I got it. So, now well, here's another one. <clears throat> well, down the uh, another one down adjusted. That's yeah, real tough to get these things adjusted using the course control, but uh, a little bit of finessing, and uh, you get so close that uh, you know there's just a point where you just got to stop. But I think I'll call that good. And we'll do one last parting shot. Look how clean that is. 
That is just absolutely amazing. I bet you this thing spent most of its life off. I mean, there's... Oh, man. Gold-plated traces. This thing... Oh, my lord. This thing was, uh, according to the uh, 86 catalog, which is uh, when this thing was... Let's see here. I can't really get it there, but... Uh, yeah, it's an 80... 86... Yeah, boy. This thing was, uh, in the catalog, this thing was $9,500. So, yeah, it's no wonder these things were so expensive. I remember looking in the catalog at these things and going, and just, I was astonished how much these things cost. But, you know, when, uh, you know, when uh, the, the design and construction, uh, there's no, there's no uh, cost constraints, no, uh, you know, no cost cutting that you need to do. You just build it. And you just build it right the first time. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, I'll put the cover back on and uh, I'll see what she displays. Well, there we go. Looks like I got it within a couple of millihertz anyway. That's about as good as I can do. So uh, that's <laughs> more than enough what I'm going to be using this thing for. Uh, if I want to get any more accurate than that, then I'll just... Use an external, uh, uh, my uh, DPS or, or GPS DO for anything more accurate than this. But yeah, I'm gonna call that successful. Yeah, all the buttons work. They all click. All the little, uh, little clicky gizmos in there or have been abused. I mean, this thing is spotless. Uh, yeah, another one of these. Um, you know, just powered it up, you know, and showed it operating, and I just, I took a chance, uh, just because of the near pristine condition this thing was in, and, uh, yeah, I, I was lucky, because <laughs> you see these things on eBay, and a lot of them are all beat up, you got the, uh, the trim, you know, the trim caps on the knobs are missing, or the thing's completely slathered in stickers, you know, uh, calib old calibration stickers, asset stickers, uh, you know, and they want, you know, a thousand dollars for them. This, I got a screaming deal. I, I paid uh, 250 bucks for this thing. And uh, basically, you know, hey, I'll take a chance. But anyhow, yeah, that, that's, uh, I think that's uh, it for now. I uh, need to get this stuff integrated into the rest of the system up here. So I'm going to have to move a few things around. I'm pretty much out of shelf space with all this stuff I've been collecting. Uh, if you collect any of this stuff, you know this can... Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't have enough test equipment. And so I'm going to have to move some stuff off the bench or add some stuff back onto the bench. Eventually I'm going to make a real, a real desk that I can use. But uh, in the interim, this is what I got to work with. So anyway, guys, I think this is going to be it. The, uh, the HP 5370B time interval counter. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be used in conjunction with the uh, 5371A. That's right there. The frequency and time interval analyzer. And uh, I want to see what kind of uh, Allen deviation plots I can do with this thing now that it can go out at least two more decimal places. So we'll see how that works. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll have uh, some more videos coming soon. Catch you later. Bye.